Hello, my name is Tevo Sachs, and I'm going to do a recap video for Open DAP Framework introductory research session. So we had a nice sit together uh, where we had a workshop about thinking about tasks and task management and, and documentation for the tasks. Uh, in this session, I will go over high level what we did, what we discussed, and some examples of the output and the feedback for the session. So first, OpenDAP framework is a Cardano Project Catalyst funded proposal uh, where we chose a problem. There is no general framework for a decentralized project management app. And we thought, okay, let's conduct an analysis of existing projects. And then we have a few snapshots from these workshops, and we intend to do a functional analysis of the common use cases and consider various abstract models or design patterns that may be used in specific circumstances based on the uh, results we get from the workshops. Before I dive into the data itself, uh, let me orient us on the motherboard. So right now we are in here in the yellow boxes, which are called live session boards. Um, and in these areas, and there are going to be more of these where we cannot take the live session notes. But in order to even have these sessions, we have a session management area where we plan all of this um, um, together. And um, if you are interested to join and want to be part of this team, uh, let me know privately. Um, and then on top, there are going to be different tools we are going to use to um, do these uh, sessions or to manage entire project. And on, on the bottom here, there is going to be a framework area, which where we're going to have all kinds of outputs, either framework, it's framework versions or the outputs of the sessions. If I zoom out, then you will see us in this yellow box, which is the live session area. Um, I added, so I'm a bit contradicting myself there. Uh, on the right side, I added place to go through a session exercise on your own and give yourself five minutes in each section. So if you find these analyses and, and these kinds of exercises uh, helpful and insightful, uh, open the motherboard and tap on your stickies on in this area and I will look at that and organize them appropriately. So all of this output we had in this session, I actually, uh, I organized them into a new um, section. So below here, if I zoom out, you see the same logic in the framework section. Um, I organized all the sticky notes. The first thing to notice are uh, sticky color codes. So each, each color on a sticky has a meaning. Um, for example, red ones are starting sticky, session actions, main questions. Yellow ones are ideas or topics. Uh, purple ones are feedback. Um, teal ones are highlights. And white ones are completed action items or ideas. And then you will see color codes even in, in these frames and which will then actually override the higher level color codes. So we can see highlights here, some feedback here. There is no color coding for purple here. So basically these all purple ones are all feedback and entire across the board. Um, so let's dive into the first exercise. What tasks or bounties you are recording or looking forward to record to manage project progress? So um, first thing I noticed there when we everybody started doing tasks, it, it mainly uh, goes into two areas. Either they are actions or they are assets. Actions are activities what produce new actions or assets, and assets are usable data which can be in many forms, documents, results, videos, tokens, metadata, etc. And then I even I color coded like starting actions and starting assets differently. There can be many starting points, uh, but I chose a few which, which felt for me the most like higher level uh, tasks or actions 
or uh, uh, high level actions or or assets which basically um, create a bunch of more actions or assets. So at at the start we have um, so all of these sticky notes are the ones which every individual uh, put on the board. I, I removed the duplicates and then I tried to put them all together uh, in, in a way that makes sense. So, so uh, one interesting thing I noticed here was that because we are coming from this uh, project catalyst um, mindset, we, we, we had this kind of um, proposal, uh, what, what you need to do for a proposal thinking there. And then another huge discussion was about the meetings. How do you get this proposal completed? And who do you talk to? Um, so let's dive into it. So proposal writing is an action which creates an asset called proposal. And that proposal itself will consist of many assets. For example, going right, uh, a proposal will be expected to have proposal deliverables. And if you want to deliver on proposals uh, in order to have these deliverables, you do some monthly reporting or state of milestone reporting. If you put down the deliverables, then you basically have a documentation. Documentation is also an asset which can dive into many smaller things like project roadmaps is, uh, came out in this example. Then proposals also have a definition defin definition of products or def definition of services, which means uh, in, in many cases, they will come down to product feature or the service features. And in order to, uh, and if you have an asset of product or a feature or a service or a feature, then you have to do some actions in order to make it useful, either integrate them, share it to the uh, public uh, comms, or, or actually even get that product produced, which then requires moderation. So if you go on the integration side, we have some administrators tasks, which then starts going down the rabbit hole of setting it up, infrastructure and documentation, all that. For the public comms, uh, we had one note about writing tweets, but you can see already there are so many other ways to communicate. And then moderation comes down to the meetings. And there was a lot of many other meeting types were coordination, onboarding, roundtables, internal agenda meetings. But all in all, meetings then have a potential to uh, create recorded text content or recorded video content, and which are assets. And once you have these, they can go into more detail of, okay, so once you have recorded text content, this can be used as a meeting attendance. And if you have a meeting attendance, you somebody might want to reward the collaboration of participating in that meeting. Another interesting idea we had here was like a deboarding. So like an asset is an onboarding form. Uh, but then it leads to thinking of, okay, how would you do in deboarding and that, et cetera. So it, overall, this exercise was to get people ideating on all kinds of different tasks. And for this analysis, it was interesting to see how they all correlate and, and see the, these kinds of patterns emerging um, because we are from same, uh, community, same, yeah. On the next tasks, we have task management, documentation, and communication activities, and then coordination management activities. Again, here first, uh, let's jump into color code explanation. So at the high level group or community name is in dark green and actions or tasks are in um, dark or orange. Uh, for example, you can see impact lead generators is the group and generated lead co uh, confirmed collaboration is the tasks. Then there are on the left side, there are categories. I technically these oral categories, um, but I started adding a judgment colors on the more detailed uh, categories. So for example, location for communication, 
and are divided up into coordination and progress reports. Like where are the, where is coordination happening? Where are progress reports? And where they are collected, where they are shared. Then location for documentation and same thing. Where are the templates? And what are the templates? Where are guides? What are they? And where are all the resources? And if something is missing or not sure that's the actual exist or it doesn't really fit to the framework, then I added either uh, pink or braces questions, yellow color code. And zooming out, uh, you will see some feedback here. Uh, so the three main feedback from that was like, uh, when coming down to the uh, location for documentation and resources, and um, there was a probably a bit of misunderstanding what I meant by resources. So this is an, an, a feedback from myself, basically, uh, in order to improve our future uh, sessions. And another big thing was that um, on the swarm, um, there was, instead of a task, the task was running an after downhaul, which is a quite a huge project that which can have hundreds of tasks under that. And so, it didn't really fit to that framework, but then again, pretty good results, if I may say so. And then finally, on the resources, there was a sticking about humans. And, but for now, I dismissed it because it, it's an interesting new layer to organize tasks, but that was not really what I was meaning when we talked about location for uh, documentation. <clears throat> Yeah, so let's go through for a few examples um, um, how these different um, projects then did. So impact lead generators, um, they have hourly meetings every week. They have progress reports on the work. They have a template how to do a task if somebody needs it. There are several guides how to run a team and how to participate in this network. And there is no actually go to link for resources as of now. Uh, compared to Singularity Net Ambassador program, um, they were working on translation tasks. So they coordinate one-on-one -on, -one on via Discord and they have a T-work to manage tasks and, and like have the progress reports there, but they also the output is a bit of a progress reports in the medium blog posts or in the Singularity Net Forum for the one template for doing the task, translation tasks. And they have several guides uh, about uh, how to use the work, how to create tasks there. And some uh, resources uh, of all of these projects on my board in the, in the blog uh, posts and in the kit book. Swarm, Town Hall. The, because this was a bit bigger project, it still fits to the framework. Um, one half day I also have every Monday a hourly meeting for progress reports. Uh, I put it questionable here because they do it in the Catalyst Town Hall announcements or in closing reports. Perhaps for bigger projects it's nice, but it doesn't really give that. I click here, I know the exact status uh, and that kind of this is why I would that it's somewhat missing, but it's still there in a high level. They have a bunch of templates for Litex, and uh, they have meeting agenda template, feedback process, and the way to manage the breakout rooms. Um, of course, they have a many guides uh, how, how to run after downhaul, or well, at least one guide. <laughs> and yeah, for resources, they use Google Drive and and Discord public chats and some triggering mechanics to, to handle the resources. Um, and for onboarding sessions, what I do in the for the swarm or for the catalyst, I didn't have too much information. Everything is quite questionable, but I do have resources. I have mirror boards which I use. And same for um, monthly uh, reporting, but I'm actually not the one who's doing monthly reporting for Swarm. So uh, it may not be that accurate. It's just from my perspective. 
Um, <clears throat> main thing here I uh, highlight is that if anything is missing in the framework or you thought it's uh, like uh, too detailed or a uh, duplicate information, let me know. Let's improve because this was the first time we actually tested the framework in, in the session itself. And I think it was quite effective and, and we, we did get the story out of the projects and the tasks they're doing and even provided many different templates. So if you in need of a template or some guides, check these works out and perhaps they can be helpful for you. Coordination math. So final exercise, coordination management activities. So on the top here, um, there are uh, different facilitation methods like onboarding, how do you do onboarding, how do you progress with the tasks, and how, how you do an uh, oversight of the task, and how you facilitate it. Um, and then each of these have a category below, uh, like how do you prepare for onboarding or for prepare for that facilitation? How do you coordinate it? And then how do you assess the feedback? Mm, and then let's just use that one example of um, uh, impact lead generators, yes, uh, where they, they prepare for onboarding, they provide resources like Google Links and Google Forms, Google Slides and Google Forms to Discord channels. Then they coordinate with these people uh, uh, in the breakout rooms. Um, and finally, they look at the onboarding form results. Um, and then they move into the progress report facilitation. Again, they basically, they look at the answers field and, <coughs> and the tasks on T work what has been taken up, how have things have been moved. And based on that, they coordinate with um, specific people or basically contributors. Um, and if there is anything missing, uh, they will, ah, yeah. if, there, if there, anything is missing, they will coordinate with the contributor. And over time, they will assess the feedback of how, how the contributors then uh, uh, perform. And finally, for oversight facilitation, they don't really prepare, but uh, they do have a coordination, weekly coordination meeting, and they always check if there is something is going not, if something is breaking up, not working, then they collectively find a better way of um, doing the work. And this kind of coordination management activities are uh, are under every of this task, or every of this task, except the last one. And the main feedback here is that new facilitation type, perhaps. So under EPS1, running after downhaul, they felt like quality assurance facilitation would be needing. If you want to see how other projects are doing, check a uh, link in the description, jump into the minor board, and check out other people. Main takeaway here is um, think about tool to versus capacity to do. So even if you have all green, it doesn't mean you're, this is perfect task. Maybe you actually perform even worse if you have all of this under control and some uh, loose things are needed. So always keep, um, keep a reality check of, it, should you even do that preparation or assessing feedback? Sometimes it's nice to just jump straight into the meeting. Sometimes it's just enough to prepare and not do coordinations on every step. Um, but yeah, that was a quite an interesting um, exercise again. And, and thank you for providing that uh, insight. Finally, we had the session feedback on live and offline through Google Form. Um, on live workshop feedback, uh, one thing pointed out, open that framework itself is a confusing name. So a, a bit of agree. And uh, so we rename it to decentralized project management framework. However, if there is anything related to proposal, we keep the original name just to stay formal and legal <laughs> in the event. Um, 
On the feedback, there were a bunch of questions like how differently smaller group, larger group, and individual tasks need to be approached. What made the task to be successful? Was it people, tools, or methods? Uh, and how to scale successful tasks? These are all very good questions, and which I'm not going to go answer right now. But there are topics which we can take to the future uh, workshop sessions. On the offline, um, I had two questions. What can you learn from this workshop? So people mentioned how to find gaps in your documentation, how to how important is onboarding, how many different steps there are to get bounty tasks completed, and you might like ideating and comparing notes in group. And what went well in this workshop? Session captured different processes from different groups. And then some, uh, again, high-level feedback I put as um, purpose this. I think we pre-work at uh, examples of problems we spend five minutes solo working on would speed up the group alignment on a problem we are trying to investigate or solve these workshops, in these workshops. So I totally agree. I felt that also that if there wasn't example, it, I had to make up the example on the spot anyway. So going forward in future, I will make sure I have some pre-worked examples to speed up the process and getting more uh, uh, understanding of the exercise. Then emphasize that they can alter the schema if it doesn't fit. So yeah, thanks for that. I, I sure sometimes get too dry down on the process and flow, but yeah, this is this framework is open for everybody. Like break the system. It doesn't if it doesn't work for you, so that we could make a better framework for all of us. And finally, directly compare and discuss different project management tools. We did take a few notes of list of tools which came up on each of these um, uh, projects. And going forward in future, I think this is a valuable exercise to compare tools. And um, yeah, this is, was the recap. Thank you for watching.